IAC 2022 has been happening in Paris and boy do we have some exciting news from there. A new reusable crew vehicle for example. We'll be covering that and a whole lot more in Monday's Tomorrow Space News. Before we head to Paris though, let's head to South Texas and catch up on what's been happening with Starship over the last seven days. First up is a continuation from last week's update with the top section of the can crusher being rolled back to the production site. This week is the bottom half of the structural test stand, which has itself rolled back to the production site. Star Factory is nearing completion, but look, there's something inside. This looks like a ring section, but it is inside the factory, so it's quite hard to verify. Booster 7 has spin primed again with what looks like 7 engines. Hopefully another static fire is coming soon, but without official word from Elon, it is hard to tell if static fires were planned and not reached, or if they just weren't planned at all. Alongside Booster 8 in High Bay 2, one of Booster 9's tank sections has been stacked in the middle of the night. Ship 25 is getting closer to completion, with the nose cone section being lifted and stacked on the aft section of the vehicle. Will we be seeing this vehicle testing soon? Let me know what you think in the comments, bearing in mind that we're still waiting for its older sibling to finish its campaign. The following day, the sections were welded together. If this vehicle flies, also expect the gap to be patched with thermal tiles. The next ship in the family, number 26, has had its bare nose cone spotted outside of tent number 3. It does have the attachment points for the starbrick thermal tiles, however. It was seen moving around the production site later the same day, eventually ending up basically where it started. Very rarely do we cover Raptor explosions in McGregor, they're just quite common, but this latest one has intrigued me. A Raptor on one of the horizontal test stands was seen with a new blast shield, which would help protect it if a neighbouring engine decided it no longer wanted to serve SpaceX and blew up. This particular engine was tested to destruction on the tripod test stand as seen by NSF's McGregor Live broadcast, which you should 100% check out. It is epic. As well as IAC, which we'll get onto in a moment, World Satellite Business Week was happening last week, with many of those in the industry coming along to say hi. SpaceX's Tom Ochenera, however, said a little bit more, updating SpaceX's launch goals to a little over 60 for this year and 100 in 2023, which includes six Falcon Heavy launches over the next 12 months. I should be at one of those Falcon Heavy launches, nudge nudge wink wink, link in the description. It's hot off the press news coming to you now from Paris, which is hosting the 73rd International Astronautical Congress. Day one on Sunday brought us a big update. Ariane Space has been working on a reusable crew rated vehicle for use with the new Ariane 6. The ship is called Suzy, the smart upper stage for innovative exploration, and it looks as if it's a mashup of Starship capability and a small vehicle form factor. It's 12 meters long and 5 meters wide, and it has the ability to carry 7 plus metric tons to orbit, 5 crew and or cargo in the 40 meters cubed payload bay, and it can take that back to Earth as well. Suzy, therefore, is more of a competitor with Dragon, which is 4 meters wide and 8.1 meters tall with the trunk attached. But unlike Suzy, the cargo dedicated section cannot be returned to Earth. That's where the similarities with Starship start to kick in, as like Starship, it can carry crew and cargo to and from space. Suzy's dimensions most closely resemble the legendary McDonnell Douglas DCX, however, being the same height, just 90 centimeters wider, and a similar pyramid ish shape. Unlike Starship, Suzy is being designed from the beginning with an abort possible at every phase of flight, from launch to landing. The last time we heard about an abort system from Elon Musk, he was just hoping that the thrust to weight ratio of the crewed Starship would be good enough for an abort. If what I'm working out from the press release video is true, then Suzy, just like Starship, is going to be belly flopping, falling towards the ground horizontally before igniting its engines and flipping to the vertical position before smoothly touching down. I'm also digging the space shuttle style paint scheme with what appears to be thermal tiles and the crew access arm, which is similar to SpaceX's on LC-39A. Suzy is being designed with compatibility in mind, as not only will it be able to fly on the Ariane 6 4, the variant with four solid rocket boosters, it will also be able to fly on Ariane Space's next generation of launch vehicle. 
Ariane Space has also not been short on the list of tasks that SUSE will be capable of with them listing, inspecting, upgrading and towing satellites, resupplying space stations, crew changeovers at space stations, human on-orbit activities, assistance with the on-orbit construction of large infrastructure, and it'll be able to catch and deorbit satellites nearing the end of their lives. The future of SUSE isn't restricted to low Earth orbit though, with it being able to carry out long duration missions with lunar orbit being pointed out in the press release with a quote, space transfer vehicle. If SUSE goes ahead and it doesn't get halted at the drawing board, the future of European spaceflight seems very bright because this epic new vehicle is something that is extremely exciting for a human flight capability lacking space agency. And quickly before we take a look at the week's launches, let's talk once again about the Big Orange Rocket. As a reminder, this Wednesday the 21st of September is the current date for the critical tanking test to find out whether or not the repairs to the quick disconnect at the bottom of the rocket have worked. Assuming that they've worked and there are no problems with leaky hydrogen, SLS could be go for launch as soon as the 27th, which is just over a week away. However, NASA are still waiting on the Space Forces, they need a waiver on the flight termination system batteries. That means that even if the test is successful, SLS may still need to roll back to the VAB, jeopardizing the September attempts. Now, I want to see SLS fly as soon as possible, but I also know that on October window would be a bit more convenient for a lot of people. Hopefully by the end of Wednesday, we'll have the answer. September 13th at 1318 UTC saw the launch of this Long March 7A with the 5-ton ChinaSat 1E on board. It commenced from LC201 at the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center in China, heading for a geostationary orbit. Officially, the satellite is branded as a communications and broadcasting satellite, although there are speculations that the Chinese military could be a bit more involved. Heading down to New Zealand, Rocket Lab reached 30 launches of Electron on September 15th at 2038 UTC from Launch Complex 1B on the Mahia Peninsula. Inside the payload fairing was just one of Sinspective's Strix satellites, specifically Strix 1, weighing in at about 100 kilos. This satellite was delivered to its expected 563 km sun synchronous orbit with a 97 degree inclination. This flight brought their total number of launches for 2022 up to 7, matching their previous record in 2020, however due to the failure of the PIX or it didn't happen mission, 2022 is now their most successful year on record with no failures out of their 7 flights. After scrubbing for weather more times than I care to remember, Starlink Group 4 Mission 34 finally launched from Slick 40 at 0105 UTC on September 19th. All 54 satellites were successfully delivered to their initial 336 by 232 km, 53.22 degree low Earth orbit, and they'll be raising themselves up into Shell 4 over the coming months, ending up at about 540 km. The booster serving this mission, B1067, touched down on the drone ship Just Read the Instructions, with support ship Doug scooping up the fairing halves. What have we got coming up over the next few days? First up, a Soyuz 2.1A with MS-22 heading to the International Space Station on Wednesday and a final ever flight of a Delta IV Heavy from Vandenberg on Saturday with NROL-91 on board. Thank you to the citizens of tomorrow who help to support the channel financially. If you like what you see and you want more exclusive access, such as seeing scripts as they're being written and access to our member-only live show hangouts, then make sure to head to join.tmro.tv or the join button below to become one of the ground support suborbital, orbital, escape velocity or plan pro plus citizens today. Don't go anywhere, the week's not over just yet. Wednesday we'll see space weather return with Dr. Tamitha Scope, Friday there may be a live show and next Monday I'll be back with the latest and greatest from the aerospace industry. But for now I hope we'll see you on Wednesday, thanks for watching and goodbye.